Hello and good evening. Hello, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you. How may we assist you this evening? Yes, well, years ago, you know, 50 years ago or so, through meditation, I came up with that I had two gods. One was named John and one was named Mary. But now I find out that Zed is my guide. So I'm just curious, did it change or was I wrong? And nothing has changed. Well, your guides are the same. However, certain ones may take more initiative or come more to the forefront for various purposes and various seasons of your life. So there was a John and a Mary? Yes. Okay. And they still are with you. Okay. John and Mary are human souls. Mm. Once human souls, disembodied souls, mm. that watch over you. Zed is both your higher self and your future self and also a spirit guide as well. And so persons may have innumerable spirit guides or one or two and the influences can change based on their light emanation and the circumstances of their journey. And souls can attract additional spirit guides based upon their work or their light emanation. And Zed is very connected to the vision of his ancestors and the tall greys that existed before the before the failure of their species to continue on in the body and so Zed is very connected to the these ancestors and the understanding of the events that led to this tragedy and seeks to influence souls incarnating as Zeta Reticuli in order to redeem the past as much as is possible and secure a better future for this interstellar race. Okay, so can answer this question for me. I totally believe that the mind has the power to heal, to make sick and to heal. Yes. I consciously believe that, but I'm unable to do it in the present. Therefore, I must have an unconscious blockage. If I do, and if not, how can I get rid of the unconscious unconsc block? Is preventing me from having the power to use my mind to heal me. Well, all things must begin in acceptance. Acceptance is the point in which a space is open for something different to occur. And so to accept and embrace that at this moment you find yourself unable to alter your state of being and access healing if you can embrace that reality with compassion for yourself this is a very good place to begin 
because the resistance around your inability creates more resistance and inability. Oh, we have a question for you. Does it make sense to you that you would be tested primarily in the area of healing? Yes. On a personal level. I guess. And what would be the purpose of that sort of testing? To make me a better healer of other people. Yes, for empathy is... of utmost importance and if you lose the capacity to empathize with those that come to you you will no longer be a compassionate and caring healer in other words a healer with perfect health has the temptation of entering into a you'd better ship shape up or ship out sort of attitude with the ones they serve. We would like to answer your question more specifically. Some of the physical ailments you are experience are due to chinks in the armor, so to speak, or leaks in your energetic field. And these need to be shored up and sealed up sealed with white light sealed with angelic protection we believe you are very aware of the things that are draining your energy true And yes. Yeah, yes, I think some of them, yes. How do you counteract an unwanted energy? Or do you counteract an unwanted energy? All things are solved with love and meditation, and all things are healed in love and meditation. What is your very current? We know that you believe in meditation, that you know how to do it, that you engage it, but what is your current level of meditation? What is your commitment to meditation at this time? Uh, <clears throat> not that great right now. Although, during the channeling, I feel like I go into meditation. Yes, we would agree. But, I know that years ago when I would, I would come home at night after work and, and meditate and I would get in much deeper states than I get in now. And what was the motivation at that time for meditating? I guess to feel, to feel how good it feels to be in that state. And what has changed? states 
So it seems that there is a need for a change. Yes, and I even thought about that today, but the change would be less time with Angie, and that I, I don't, I can't, I don't want to do. Or you could consider having more meditation on your days off during the yes. daytime. Yes, and that's... While one, you are alert. That's one of the solutions that I came up with. Yes, because rest is important. I just... I, and if you want to sleep, and you can sleep, you should allow your body to sleep now. And can you, in moments during your work days, set your alarm and meditate for five minutes or ten minutes in various parts of your day? Yes, I could probably do that. So, so if your body is tired and you want to sleep, then so be it. So perhaps you can meditate during the day on your days off instead. But overall, it sounds like there is a need for a, a change in order to accommodate what you can, how you can shift things through meditation. Because you can shift things through meditation. We're not sure you remember that. Do you remember that? Yes, I'm, I mean, I... I try and do it now when I get into bed, but um, I, I, you are tired. I fall asleep too soon. That's fine. You should not resist the urge to fall asleep. So it is just that a change is in order to accommodate a new season of life. So we wish to remind you of two things. One is that meditation is the place in which you do your work, you see, and things are accomplished and created in the manner in which you so choose. And as you meditate, begin to seal up energetic drains. We want to say this you can you might think that removing yourself from someone's presence seals up or eliminates the possibility of their draining you but that is not necessarily so Meditation and being shielded by white light is where you seal up any leaks or drains on your energetic body. So we're just reminding you, don't think that because you are separating yourself in proximity or, or, or communication or connection with someone that you have separated yourself from their influence. And there are ones who are draining you, such as the hysterical women. The hysterical women. We would ask you to spend some time meditating about what roots might be found around the need to have hysterical women in 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 your company because these are some who drain your energy are we talking about patients yes some of them yes so meditation sealing up energetic drains which cannot be done simply by 
increasing physical proximity. It's not only can't be completely done that way, you see. It has to be done in the etheric realm through meditation and intention and prayer, shielding. Michael is a good one for this. So these two things, meditation, sealing up, energetic, leaks. And there is a third thing, and it is this. You have forgotten to hold miracles in your consciousness. You have forgotten that miracles exist. And you have lost your miracle consciousness, meaning having miracles a forefront in your consciousness. And thereby, by holding them in your consciousness, making space for their creation. And this is another aspect of the injured faith we spoke to you about before. Can you remember a time when you had miracle consciousness? And what is your feeling about now? Do you feel that you have miracles in you for others, yourself and others? Not like I used to. And so you might consider what Judah mentioned Sunday night. We are still the Pleiadian here. We think you know this. Yes you might consider what Judah said about borrowing another's faith. You see, remember she told the story about having faith for certain things and not for others. So you might borrow another's faith in the realm of miracles. It could be as simple as listening to stories or watching stories about true miracles that occurred and beginning to allow those true stories to recreate faith and miracle consciousness in you and charging your faith when you walk in the building in the morning you say this is a place of miracles and i'm a miracle maker This is a place of miracles, and I'm a miracle maker. And Sally's going to get her miracle today. And John is going to get his miracle today. And this is a place of miracles, and I'm a miracle maker. And all of these needles are charged with miracles. And the last thing we will say is that sometimes certain physical weaknesses are allowed they are allowed to to bring humility and to bring one to their knees have you ever heard this phrase it brought me to my knees yes and what what does this phrase mean to you it brought me to my knees And also, uh, when people pray on their knees, why do you think they pray on their knees? Um, To feel lower than who they're praying to, to show respect or, or to who they're praying to. Yes, as a form of reverence and humility. And so... This is where this phrase comes from. It brought me to my knees. It is saying that this circumstance or this thing I have faced and facing is is humbling me before the Creator. It's bringing me to my knees.
and also the phrase, it made me weak in the knees, weak in the knees. So some of these things are allowed. They are not best practice, but they are allowed in order to make a space for dependency on one's higher self and upon universal consciousness and to decrease dependency on the ego And also, as we said, to increase one's compassion for those in your care. It is similar to this. If there is a, let's say, a very brilliant Harvard professor and scientist who teaches Science 101 to the freshmen, at Harvard every year and if this very capable and intelligent scientist is not careful he may lose his ability to relate to the new one that is not does not understand that still struggles with the material that doesn't get what he's saying the things are going over their heads you see the things are going over the young students' heads because the scientist is very brilliant and has forgotten what it is like to struggle to understand something new, something foreign, something unfamiliar. And so sometimes these circumstances are allowable in order that you might regain your a connection and understanding for the struggles people go through and what it is like to to seek a healing or a change or an understanding and not to be able to seem to find it you see and above all things my dear we would l- hope that you will love yourself through it all and in it all for you have a tendency to have very rigid expectations for yourself. And so be kind and compassionate to yourself and allow yourself to be human. <laughs> <laughs>